In this video we're going to look at the cumulative distribution function for continuous random variables. The definition that we have here for the cumulative distribution function for continuous random variables is the the actual definition is exactly the same as we've had before. That really isn't any different. How we calculate it for a continuous random variable is different than what we've seen for a discrete random variable. So the suppose we have a random variable x and it's a continuous random variable. Then we define a function f of x, capital F of x, which is the probability that our random variable will be less than or equal to that lowercase x. This part is, is the same for any random variable. This, this part doesn't change at all. How we calculate it for a continuous random variable is slightly different. In this case, we've got a continuous function, f of x. This is the density function. And the density function is continuous, so we need to integrate it from minus infinity to x. So it's an integral function, minus infinity up to whatever that value x is. So because this is a, the integral has as the limit this x variable, we can't put x as our integral variable. And so we had to make a change of variable or change the variable here to t. You can really use any variable you want in here. So we'll be I'll be using t. What are the properties? Again, these properties here are identical to what we've had before for for discrete random variables. The function itself because it is probabili a probability can only be between 0 and 1 or um, inclusive 1 0 and 1. The range for x is minus infinity to infinity. The function evaluated at minus infinity, of course, is zero. Again, if we integrated this function from minus infinity to minus infinity, obviously we're going to get zero. And if we integrate it from minus infinity to infinity, as we've seen with our properties of our density function, that should be equal to one. The function itself is a continuously increasing function. So if x1 is less than x2, then F, capital F of x1 will be less than or equal to the function evaluated at x2. Now here's a different property if we, well actually this is the same property too. If we want to find the probability that our random variable will be between x1 and x2, we just evaluate our function at x2 and then subtract off the function evaluated at x1. Now this one we haven't really talked about before. It, it really is a property of the two functions but we are really only going to apply it here for continuous functions. In this case, the density function, because it is the our, our cumulative distribution function is the integral of this, then this function is the derivative of this function. <coughs> so the density function is the derivative of our cumulative distribution function. All right, so let's look at an example. We're going to find the, or actually we're given the cumulative distribution function and we're going to find some probabilities for our random variable. What's the probability that it'll be less than or equal to three-fourths? What's the probability it'll be between one-half and three-fourths and greater than one-fourth? And we're going to sketch the function. The given part is in blue and so it's defined over different regions. For x less than zero, it's equal to zero. For x between zero and a half, it's equal to x over two. For x between one half and one, it's equal to x squared. And above one, it's equal to one. So let's plot that again. We're going to look at the endpoints and plot them. So from zero to a half, it's a should, that should be a straight line. Straight line from zero to one quarter. It'll be a one quarter at one half. Now notice that if I plug in because we're dealing with a continuous random variable here and not discrete, we don't have discontinuities. And so at one half, if we divide or if we evaluate this function, this one at one half, we get one quarter. And if we divide this or evaluate this one at one half, we also get one quarter. And so they match up. So there's a, a continuous function there. There's no there's no discontinuities. All right, so we we have an x squared term in between one half and one, so I got a curve there, and then from one on it's equal to one. Now to calculate those probabilities, by definition, the probability of x being less than or equal to three quarters is equal to our function evaluated at three quarters, 
and so three quarters is in this range so we just plug three quarters into x squared and our probability is nine sixteenths for our probability between one half and three quarters using our dense uh, distribution function properties this will be the function evaluated at three quarters minus evaluated at a half at three quarters we plug in again this one we already found at nine sixteenths and at one half we can use either of these but we already said it's equal to a quarter so we plug in one quarter and we end up with five sixteenths for that probability now the probability that x is greater than one quarter we know is one minus the probability that x is less than or equal to one quarter and this is just our function evaluated at one quarter so we find out where one quarter one quarter is in this range so we plug in one quarter here to x that gives us one eighth and so the probability for that is seven eighths all right now let's look at a problem where we're given our density function f of x for this random variable and we're going to find and sketch the distribution function okay so we need to do here's a definition of our distribution function we need to perform this integral again I've got the plot we've already done this one before so it's a straight line up to 2 and it's 0 everywhere else now notice that our function has essentially three sections and again we're gonna be moving our x variable and integrating from minus infinity up to x so if x is in this range here we're essentially integrating all zeros we'll also have a different function value if we have our x in this second region and then again a different value or a different function if we have our var variable x over in this region so we're going to really have three parts to the solution it's really important that you you kind of figure this out beforehand just write write your function down like this and we'll figure out what they are for those three value those three sections so again the, the function is zero here a different value in here and then again zero so we're going to put x in those three sections and figure out what our distribution function is all right so we'll go through those one by one so when when x is in this this region the zero region we have we're integrating minus infinity up to this x value so minus infinity to x the function is equal to zero during that whole time so we just integrate zero and of course we get zero so we can immediately write down zero in that region all right there's so really there's two you ought to look at real quick that one and the, and the last one but we'll do them in order for the next region we have x being between 0 and 1 so it's in this region here and what are we integrating we're integrating from minus infinity up to that x we're integrating two things we're integrating 0 up to here where x is equal to 0 and then we're integrating our function from 0 to x so we've got two different integrals in here minus infinity to zero we're integrating zero that of course will be equal to zero and then we're integrating from zero to x now remember we have to plug in a different variable here we can't put in x or things won't work out right we're going to plug in 2t is our function 2t and then dt we integrate that and we get t squared evaluated at x and zero that just gives us x squared so that's the, the function when x is between 0 and 1 so we'll write that down into this section now the last one is when x is after that 1 so when x is greater than 1 and what are we integrating we're integrating minus infinity to 0 we're integrating 0 so we're integrating get that integral we're integrating from 0 to 1 we're integrating this whole function 0 to 1 dt or sorry 2t dt and then from 1 to x we're integrating 0 now if you remember this is everywhere that our function is non-zero so this actually gives us 1 and these two other two other two of course give us 0 so our whole function is just equal to 1 at that point and it's equal to 1 and we know that it, we have to end up with it being equal to 1 as x goes to infinity also as x goes to minus infinity we have to be equal to it has to be equal to 0 now let's plot the function it's 0 up to x equals 0 it's equal to x squared from 0 to 1 so I've got a curve like x squared 
it ends up being equal to 1 at 1 and then it's equal to 1 from then on so I just draw a straight line and there's our the plot of our distribution function right, let's do another example in this case we're given our distribution function and we're gonna find the density function <clears throat> we're gonna sketch our distribution function first and then we'll find our density function and then sketch it now if we look at our di distribution function we've got four different sections we've got and this is actually the one that we saw before it's equal to zero for x less than zero x over two between zero and one half x squared from one half to oops, that should be a less than or equal to sign one and then one from then on now remember to find the density function we just take the derivative of the distribution function and we can take the derivative of each section and so that's what we'll do for x less than zero our function is equal to zero if we take the derivative of a constant we just get zero remember the derivative is the slope so the slope of a constant is zero so it's equal to zero for x less than zero again what I'll do is I'll I would write our density function put in the regions and then fill in the components so for x less than zero it's equal to zero that's the first part that we did for x between zero and one half we have x over two we take the derivative of that with respect to x and we just get one half so it's equal to one half between zero and a half so just write that down for the next section one half to one our function is x squared take the derivative of that we get 2x put that into our plot our function definition for x between one half and one and then finally x is equal to one for x greater than one again we're taking the derivative of a constant and so we get zero and so we just plug zero in there now all we have to do is take our definition of our function and plot it, it <clears throat> for x less than zero we just have zero so I put I've got zero down here sorry that it's cut off a little bit here at the bottom for x between zero and a half it's a constant one half so it's we jump up to one half and it's a constant over to x equals one half now from x equals one half to one it's equal to this two x so this function two x starts at 1 and ends up at 2 at x equals 1 and so I just draw a straight line from there to there now notice the density function even though we're talking about a continuous random variable the density function of course can have discontinuities in it so I probably should have just drawn it up here and then from this point to this I probably shouldn't have drawn this line down up to here and then across and then down and then from then on it's equal to 0 from 1 to infinity it's equal to 0 and so there's the plot of our density function